Well, hello, beautiful people. Welcome back. So for today's video, we are going to be talking about the new products from L'Oreal. This is their new Skin Paradise Tinted Water Cream, and I was able to find this online. It's actually not released yet in the U.S., but um, I found this. I found a few more items from the line that I thought were kind of cool, and we're going to check all of that out, test it out, apply it, all the good things. But before we get into that, I do want to pause just a quick second and talk to you guys um, about the poll that I posted. I posted it on YouTube as well as on Instagram over the weekend. So the first thing that I want to say is a huge thank you to everyone that you did see the post and you took the time to not only, you know, read the, the paragraph that I posted, but then also to vote, leave your comments, all of that, and tell me what you're thinking. You know, give me give me your thoughts, your perspective on it. I really appreciate those of you that took the time to do it. Um, but I did get a couple of questions about, you know, why did I post the poll um, and just that whole side of things. And I just kind of wanted to take a second and explain to you guys where I was coming from, because truthfully, when I sat down, like I was going into the weekend, I didn't know, like, should I be filming? Should I not be filming? And truthfully, sitting here right now, I still don't know if I'm, if I should be filming, if this is, if this is what's right or not. Um, but, but the one thing that I do know, and the one thing that I've always kept consistent over the past, you know, three and a half or three years, however long it's been that I've been on YouTube. Um, the one thing that I've always held on to is that communicating with you guys and having an open, um, an open conversation is really, really important to me. So I wanted to take the time and post that poll because I think that just getting on here, you know, getting up, okay, it's Saturday or Sunday or whatever day, you know, for me, I, I film on the weekends, but just to get up and, you know, grab my makeup and okay, I'm going to film and we're not going to talk about what's going on in the world. You know, we're not going to talk about literally everything that's affecting the entire globe right now. I just didn't feel like that was responsible. I didn't feel like it was the right thing to do. And I feel like it sets a bad precedent for me to get on here and act like, so like literally every single person watching this a, 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 are not experiencing this the, the world right now you know whether it's covid um and the pandemic that is happening or the black lives matter movement and all of that it, it wouldn't be right for me to get on here and just act like things are normal to act like you know this is just business as usual and just you know because it, it's not like there there are things happening right now and i wanted to just let you guys know that i recognize what's happening in the world and and i recognize that it's affecting so many of us and that, you know, content like this and makeup content and what's new and a water cream, like it, it seems so inconsequential, but I also know that for so many people, this is their mental health place. This is, this is not only YouTube, but like this channel specifically, this is where so many people come to, um, feel, feel peace. This is where so many people come, um, when they're having their deepest, darkest moments, whether that's depression, anxiety, any other, you know, health or emotional distress that they're feeling. This is just a safe place for people. And I didn't feel like it would be right for me to not at least ask and present that to those of you that I know share the same the same stuff that I share. You know, I have depression, I have anxiety, I have autoimmune diseases that they don't even, they're, they're still trying to find, okay? I have, you know, spinal disorders, a brain tumor. I, I'm chronically ill and in chronic pain all the time. And the reason that I say all of these things and, and I keep this open dialogue going and the reason I tell you so much about myself and my own medical stuff is because I don't ever want to be that person that kept it to myself when all somebody needed to know was that they weren't alone. When all you need to know when you wake up in the middle of the night and you're in so much pain you can't breathe that you're not alone. It happens to me all the time. When you're sitting in the corner rocking back and forth and crying for what seems like no reason because you're having an anxiety attack, you're not alone. It happens to me too. You're laying in bed and you wonder if it's worth getting up in the morning and you wonder if you make a difference to the world. I need you to know that you do make a difference and that you matter to me and you matter to other people and that you're not alone when you think stuff like that because I've been there too and a lot of other people that watch this have been there. And with everything that's going on in the world right now, the people that feel that way are feeling it more so than ever. And I guess I'll summarize everything by saying this, you know, what's going on um, is, is a lot and it's hard for a lot of people and it's scary for a lot of people. Um, and again, that it's it's regardless of, of what, what you're talking about. I'm not talking about anything specifically. I'm just talking, you turn on the news and it's some scary shit out there. And I think it's, it's easy to think, you know, oh, it, it's, scary outside. It's, it's, you know, there's a lot going on and, you know, I, I don't know what to do. I'm overwhelmed. I'm anxious. Um, but it's also important to remember that for some of us that 
what's happening out outside is a lot, but what's happening inside is even more. What's happening inside of us is scarier and it's and it's and it's more deadening and it's more soul crushing. For some of us, the reality of our own thoughts and our own pain and our own again anxiety and depression and our own mental and emotional health, for some of us that is a scarier reality than what it is when you look at anything else. Obviously, you guys know I'm not obtuse to what's going on in the world and neither are you. There's a lot going on and as I just, you know, I said that that's part of the reason that I I really want to establish this channel as kind of a, a, a mental health haven, if you will. Um, I want this to be a place where we can all come from our different backgrounds with our different thoughts, our different beliefs, opinions, um, our different anxieties, our different fears, and I'm hoping that this can be a place where we can all um, gather and just be without fear of judgment and where we can hang out out in the comments and maybe talk to each other about those fears and um, just just be there for each other. Now, that being said, um, I do want to mention really quickly before we get into the makeup that uh, I am going to be having down linked in the description box some links to places that I have found that have been super awesome, uh, whether they are links to some of the awesome like black owned businesses that I have found, whether they are links to um, articles that kind of talk about, you know, more businesses and, and that sort of thing. I'm going to have those linked down below. Most of these are businesses that I have actually purchased from already. And I probably, if I, like, because I have a couple in my mind right now, um, but a couple that I have to wait to purchase from because everything on their website is sold out. But uh, I want to, which by the way is fantastic, um, but I want to, um, I just want to put that down there just in case, you know, you're looking for resources and you're looking for something a little bit different. I'm going to link all of those down below. And uh, with that, you guys, I'm going to go ahead and uh, zoom the camera in and we're going to go ahead and get started with today's video. And uh, we're just going to, we're just going to decompress for a second. And for the love of God, I have a cat hair on my forehead. Oh my God, that's been itching me <laughs> for like 10 minutes. So we're going to go ahead. Okay. Thank you. And uh, we're going to get in to today's video. Let's go. All right. So the first thing we're going to start off, this is actually, a lip balm. It's their Colorish Shine Lychee Plump, I think is what that says on the bottom. But uh, it's in one of their like regular lipstick packaging, but it is just a lip balm. Whoops, hello. Excuse me. Hold on. <laughs> Pause. I didn't, I didn't exactly open it before this video. Come on. Anyways, it's the same component <laughs> as their lipsticks, but uh, it has just this uh, shine right here, which actually, why don't I give that a little, ooh, which actually, hey, why don't we look at that? <gasps> oh my God, this is gorgeous. Hold on. Let's just like take a little hit off of it. Oh my God, you guys know, mm, your girl needed, <laughs> your girl needed some chastic. I was having like some all kinds of like crusty busty lip situation, especially this weekend. I don't know what happened, but my lips are extra crusted, extra busted, and I'm just not here for it. Oh, but wow, that is smooth. Is that tingling? This is like a lip balm, right? Okay. Plumpin. What the hell does this thing say? Hold on. We're just going to, we're going to pause real quick here. This says that this is the Color Riche Plumpin Glow. It says it is a high shine lipstick with filling effect, making lips appear fuller and nourished, and it is a high shine shade. Boy, is that interesting. Okay, so I kind of thought this was a lip balm. <laughs> I was wrong. It's more of like a balm meets a gloss uh, meets a lipstick. Like it's a very interesting hybrid. So let's go ahead and uh, start by priming. And for that, we're gonna grab just a little Tatcha Silk Canvas. I have my little uh, guy right here. This is the regular version. So the one that's more of like a cream putty type consistency. We're just going to take a little bit of that. I'm not going to grab a lot. Now, really quick, before we jump right into the skin tint, I think we're going to play around first with these illuminator drops. But uh, before we even get that far, I want to just let you guys know, if you see like on the back of the packaging, how it's all like nasty, or you happen to notice like the top of this dropper, everything has like a weird tint to it. When I purchased this makeup, it all showed up in a bag, like in a literal, hold on, I actually have it right here. It showed up in a bag, okay? Like a, a bag bag. And there was not so much as a drop of filler in this bag, like to keep it from, um, you know, crumbling apart. And so as a consequence of that, there was also an eyeshadow palette in this order that showed up completely obliterated. Like the entire contents of the bag were just coated in eyeshadow. I did go through and like try to clean everything off as best I could, but uh, you know, just, just in case you happen to see it and you think like, wow, that's kind of, it's kind of dingy looking page. Where'd you pick that up? Um, I just want you guys to know there was a whole situation. I handled it. It broke they did give me a refund, whatnot. Um, but just so you know, if it looks a little funky, that's why. So let's go ahead and uh, let's get back into these glow drops. Now, I have this in the shade, what is this? 05 Iconic Glow. It comes with a dropper here. And to my understanding, this is like a very thin, 
like a like a liquid highlight <laughs> blowing bubbles <laughs> fun you guys see the bubbles bubbles also this dropper won't work so i'm just gonna i'm literally just picking it up and dropping it on my hand until i have enough to show you whoa Oh my god, it's like a duo curl. Like, what even? Hold on. Rub it in just so we can kind of see how it looks when you rub it around. It actually is really pretty. This isn't like something that I would say is, you know, like a liquid highlight. Like, I, I would never put this over a foundation or anything like that, personally, because this is such an oil-type consistency that it will literally repel your foundation or whatever you're putting on um, underneath of it. So just keep that in mind. Now, for me, for the way that I'm going to um, test this out today, I'm actually going to only apply this on one side of my face, just so that way I can keep everything even. You know, I'll have a good blank canvas to test these out but then I can also put them over top of this stuff and see how that looks as well probably I really should just like put my hair back <laughs> that, that should have been number one page get your hair out your damn face am I the only person that uses makeup brushes as a uh, hair tie <laughs> no okay so let's go ahead anyways uh, now that our hair is back and we're gonna take a little bit of these drops and we're just going to apply them straight to the face again I'm only doing them on the one half this dropper is like literally broken I can't get it to work at all and I'm just using a Sigma F10 to um, actually sweep that all over my face and just kind of work it in really quickly because my hands have that red dye I didn't want to take the chance in transferring it so I am being careful with that because it does have a more oily consistency I'm only uh, keeping it like mainly in this region I'm keeping it away from my t-zone my nose my chin the whole deal um, just, you know, obviously I just, I don't need more oil in those areas. There it is on and applied. So it is on this half and there is nothing over here. I do think, I don't know if it translates to camera, but it, oh, that definitely translates right there. Oh yes. That's, that's gorgeous. Um, this gives a really beautiful glow to the skin. Like truthfully, it looks stunning. I'm actually really impressed with how nice it looks. It looks very refined, very silky, and it doesn't leave like a weird, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It doesn't leave like any weird film. Like it definitely feels hydrated. You can feel that there's something there, but it's not like a weird, um, like a repellent kind of film, if that makes sense. It just, it feels really nice on my skin, truthfully. All right, so we're back and I went ahead and I wiped everything off. I've just been letting that soak into my skin. And now we are ready to move on to the water cream. And for that, I'm gonna be bouncing back and forth. So I have Nelly.com, which like I said, is where I purchased it. And we're gonna read some info from there. And then I'm also going to be referencing if need be the L'Oreal website. So let's go ahead and see what it says first on Nelly.com here. It says that this is a cream with nourishing water-based formula that boosts the skin, adds moisture, and refreshes the skin tone for a radiant, fresh, and well-being shine. 24-hour moisture, SPF 20. The formula includes water, extracts from aloe vera and ginger, as well as witch hazel water. And it gives a natural radiant finish and you get 30 mils of product. Now the only issue that I'm having, because I can't find enough information on it, honestly, um, is the shade range for this. I can see on the L'OrealParis.com.au website that uh, it comes in, I think, nine shades, but again, it's a skin tint, so I'm not surprised that it has a smaller shade range. Even though they list those shades on their website, like they, they say that they have them, um, there is no picture that I can find on the website, on here, or on the Nelly website that specifically like shows the shade range as far as um you know this these are the various shades they offer here are all nine um and even over on the nelly website i can't even find all nine shades so it, it seems to me with this product again because it is a skin tint i'm not surprised that there's not like a super huge shade range because there's a lot more wiggle room when you take away the coverage aspect of like a foundation or something like this um so i'm not surprised but what i am surprised by is that i can't even find like a picture showing me all of the shades like hey you know the, the this is the range like how, how do you pick a shade if you can't even like see one one shade next to all the others like I, I don't know that part for me was kind of confusing which is why I ended up with two different options here also one more thing I want to mention on Nelly.com it's currently saying that this is 20% off I guess but it says that US dollars this would be $14.36 not on sale it would be $17.95 hey <laughs> you guys <laughs> First of all, what a great face. <laughs> That's priceless. Also, let's just talk about... <laughs> Let's just talk about the two shades that I have. Um, so I grabbed this, what what are they again? Um, Fair 2 and Light 1. I just want to show you. <laughs> These are the two shades that I will be working with today. 
Oh my god. <laughs> this is this is too good. Okay. So fair two, light one. Um Mm, neither of these is my shade. Uh, I would like to believe that I'm not quite this pasty, but I'm definitely not this either. So um, <laughs> let's try to mix them together. All right, actually, okay, mix together. <laughs> kind of, kind of a good shade for me. Like, look at that. You can almost not tell that I smeared it all over my hand. Wonderful. Let's go ahead and uh, start off by making, I think, a concoction of this stuff, and then we can go from there. So I'm gonna take... A, probably a little bit more of the lighter shade and then just take like a dollop of the deeper shade I just have a little bloop right there technical term bloop, you know just that's what everybody calls it I guess um, but we're gonna take that mix it together and apply it to the face and I'm gonna be using my little busted uh, dose of color sponge here she's on her last limb I know but it's one of their newer sponges and I have been loving this profile so uh, I'm trying to get all the use I can but oh, y'all she's she's been beat up okay don't pay attention uh, but let's go ahead and take some of this and work it all over here and see if we can make that actually <laughs> I mean, that color's not that bad, okay? I've, I've had worse, okay? Let's be real. If you've been here for a hot minute, y'all know I've had some I've had some rough foundation matches in my life. For a skin tint, like, one coat of a skin tint, is that that bad? Like, I actually think that looks really good. Like, I'm impressed, okay. Oh, do, well, there went my sponge. Oh, there went my sponge! So let's go ahead from there and uh, let's start playing around with some concealer. Again, this is nothing new um, or anything, you know, to that effect. But I wanted to take and see if this shade right here, the shade Bisque 325, I wanted to see if I could spot conceal with this little felly. So because I did drop, again, you know, my sponge, which is way over there by about three miles, I'm going to take uh, this right here. This is just a Fenty foundation brush. And I'm going to take and lightly kind of just poop, poop, poop over top of those areas. Again, the concealer really for today isn't uh, isn't the star of what we got going on, but I just wanted to, you know, show you because I did pick it up in the same order, so why not, right? Under the eyes, I'm gonna take a little bit of the shade Ivory and uh, just kind of pop that under there. And then to blend that in, I just took my uh, NYX Bear With Me spray and I wet my ColourPop sponge. And I'm gonna use that to lightly just buff everything in now because my skin is on the lighter like light medium coverage side of things I'm gonna be keeping the rest of my face the same way so I'm not gonna build up a ton of coverage or anything under the eyes now to go in and set that down I'm gonna grab my Maybelline fit me this is their loose fit me powder in 05 fair I'm just gonna take and uh, use that little sponge to apply it under my eyes and through the t-zone actually you know what pause that thought really quick because i had to change the battery and it occurred to me i went ahead and i set just my under eyes but i wanted you guys to see um how this is looking on the skin before i go ahead and set anything so as of right now like i said just the under eyes have been set not the t-zone and actually hold on let me see if i can whoop wrong way let me see if i can pull this in so that way you guys can see how it looks on the skin, how it looks over my texture, all that good stuff. Um, I think it's, I mean, as far as like from my perspective, I think it looks pretty good in real life. I am noticing, and the one thing that's kind of shocking me with this is that it's not as, um, it's not coming off quite as luminous as I had expected. I, I don't know, maybe it's just me because it is like a hydrating, healthy glow type foundation. It's not really coming off super glowy, at least again, not for me, not yet. Maybe that's something that comes later. Um, but I mean, for now, I think it looks nice. I do think that if you're someone like me and um, you have more oily skin, you will have to set this because it's it's not like self-setting. It's definitely still tacky and the product itself is still lifting off just by barely, barely touching it. So, you know, just little things to keep in mind. But for now, I actually think this looks really nice. I would say this wears more and looks even more like a foundation than I would like a water cream, just in my opinion. But from there, I am going to go ahead, like I said, and I'm going to set the rest of the face. With everything all set down, I am going to throw on a little bit of bronzer really quickly. This is the Charlotte Tilbury this is their airbrush bronzer. I have it in the shade medium. I'm just going to go ahead and throw a little bit of this on here with a, um, a dual fiber brush just to give me a nice little bronzy veil. But we're going to go ahead and test out this little blush here. Again, this is their Melon Dollar Baby blush and this is in the shade 3 Watermelon Addict and uh, it looks a little something like this. It's a really beautiful, you know, just like a, stand a standard neutral bitch ass tone, which is 100% my vibe. So we're going to be testing this out. Look at the 
cute little watermelon imprints. You guys, how cute is that? And then also, I'm, I'm hanging out over here trying to find the price on this, and for some reason, this is now no longer on the uh, L'Oreal website, or the, I'm sorry, the Nelly website where I bought it, uh, so, I, so I don't know, I don't know where it went. Maybe it's no longer a thing. Maybe they ran out. I don't know. Um, so if this one is not linked down below, <laughs> and I can't tell you how much it costs, that is why, because I can't find it. I'm gonna be taking this on an It Cosmetics 227 Flawless Blush Brush. Oh my God, is that scented? Hold, I'm sorry, hold on, <laughs> hold on. This is, it's such a, okay, keep in mind, I'm also having like <laughs> allergy situations, so my nose is kind of plugged, but um, this is scented and it is 100% Anybody else that was like late 80s, 90s baby, like right around, I was born in 89. Um, this is giving me like those markers that were the scented markers. You'd put, use them on a paper and then like a week later, how there was just the faintest amount of that like marker scented smell on the paper. That is this smell. It's like, it's not intense by any stretch of the imagination. Like I can, I can barely smell it, but that's the smell I'm picking up is like, like watermelon marker. Oh my God. <laughs> it's making me so happy. Anyways, let's go ahead. We're going to apply a little bit of this. This is like the most amount of time I could have possibly spent on blush. Oh my God. That's pretty. <gasps> oh, I love this color. Oh, yep. Mm -hmm. Love this color. hundred percent. Oh gosh. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. We're going to take a little bit on the forehead. We're going to pop a little bit here up on the bridge of the nose. Oh my gosh. And it's also a really good shade if you're like right around, you know, my skin tone and you're also, you know, pasty like the inside of a chicken nugget pasty. Um, this is uh, this is a good color. I really, oh my God. Like, does my skin look obnoxiously snatched right now to anybody else? Is it just me? I can't tell anymore. I, I feel like my skin just looks, um, dare I say stunning because it does. Like, wow. <laughs> right? Right? Like, look at that. Wow. Like, maybe like a little texture emphasizing like around my pores, like right through here. But con con considering how, how I thought this was gonna look, it looks real good. Uh, let's go ahead, I need to focus. I'm gonna go ahead and jump into brows really quickly. And for that, we're gonna grab this little felly. This is the uh, Brow Styler, or wait, what was this? The Brow Skinny Definer Brow Artist. That's what this is. I picked this up in the shade 105 Brunette. So the color I think is gonna work out pretty nicely. And uh, it does give really nice little hair-like um, strokes. It's it's nothing that's like overly rich in pigment. It does seem to give you, again, a nice little um, defining hair type situation, which I really like. It doesn't seem to be um, something that's gonna be overbearing. I think right now, you know, given how much I have used the uh, the other one from L'Oreal, their Brow Stylist Definer, for how many times I have used that one, I'm very familiar with the consistency of it. I'm, I'm, I'm very curious about this one because I, I feel like it's actually creamier and it's like a, a, it applied way nicer than what I'm used to. Not because not because the one that I'm used to using from L'Oreal is bad, but this one does just seem to have like a like an effortless kind of creamy, glidey type factor to it. I actually went ahead out of my brow bin and I grabbed the L'Oreal Brow Stylist Definer here. This is in, uh, what shade is this in? Brunette. And um, it, it's interesting because I was just sitting here kind of playing around with both of the consistencies. And again, just to reiterate, the Brow Stylist Definer from L'Oreal, there's nothing wrong with it. Like it's it's a really good pencil, but there is a difference between um, like the, the emolliency, like the way that it feels while you're, you know, applying it. It feels way different, this one does, than the one that I bought offline the, what is this, the skinny definer. So if it were me and I were to compare these two and like they were just, you know, A and B and I, I didn't know that they were both from L'Oreal, personally, I would actually want the uh, the skinny definer here because I really, really like the consistency of this. This pencil on the website, it says this is currently um, $10.36 if you are getting it on sale or $12.95 if you're paying um, regular price, so if it wasn't on sale. And then we're also gonna move on to the Plump and Set Brow Artist um, volumizing brow gel. This retails for $14.95 regular price or $11.96 US um, if it's part of the sale. I have this in the shade 105 Brunette and it looks just like a teeny tiny spoolie here. Here's the situation guys. I have all of about seven brow hairs. <laughs> like I, I have literally no brow hair. Um, and this is doing like a beautiful job. Like it, it makes them look very fluffy, very voluminous, coated, thicker. Like they just, it looks really good. 
I quite enjoy this. All right, so really quickly, I did go through and lightly define my brows, nothing too crazy. And from there, I put a little bit of concealer on my lids as well, so that way we can just kind of slide right in to some eyeshadow, for which I do have these little individual ones. These are the Color Queen Mono Eyeshadows. Uh, retail for, it looks like $11.95 individually, but they're currently on sale for $6.95 a piece. This first one, oh wow, that is creamy. This one is in the shade Superior. And it is a satin shade, which I just realized I never took off all of the eyeshadows. So I'm going to have to do them on this part. So, oh my God, that's beautiful. <gasps> Can you guys see? Like, that's the most beautiful brown satin shade. Isn't that gorgeous? And then the other shade I have is Gilded, which says it is a foil shade. So let's go ahead and I'm going to pop that right next to it. <gasps> Oh my God, that's beautiful. So there's the other shade right there, the darker shade on top. That one they're saying is more of a foiled consistency. And then again, this one is the satin shade. Um, for me personally, I think that they both have a very similar um, consistency to them and they even have a very similar shine. I would say the main difference between the two is that the gilded one up here, the one that's more of a foil shade, they said, this one just has like a silver reflect that's really, really dense all the way through it. So that's what's giving it like that really beautiful shine effect. So I think for today, I'm gonna start off and probably mm, maybe primarily use this one all over the lid. This is again, the, the superior satin, the first one I swatched. So I'm gonna dive in to this one first with uh, a Morphe E23, just a fluffy brush here. Then I'm just gonna pop it right up here on the outer portion of the lids right there. Then I'm just gonna lightly kind of draw that through, mainly concentrating the product on the outer portion and then whatever's left over, drawing that in towards and keeping it more so like up on the bone right there, my orbital bone. Yeah, that's really pretty. Cause then I think I'll probably go in with just like a lighter eyeshadow shade and maybe throw that right through this area just to keep it nice and opened up. I just, I really wanna focus, I think this color more so back here. All right, guys, so I don't know if the camera just cut out or not, but I had a little bit of an SD card issue. I'm not sure what happened there, um, but everything appears to be back up and running, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and trudge on with the video. I think I'm actually gonna grab this palette. This is the Libra palette from Zodiac Cosmetics, and I'm gonna grab the shade Destiny right here. It's like a matte bone colored shade, and I'm gonna try packing that on the inner portion of my eye just to help keep it, you know, nice and open, maybe lighten it up a little bit. I'm gonna take that on a Sigma E. 70 brush here and uh, it's it's a little bit darker like the the shade is than what I originally wanted but uh, I think it'll work honestly I think it'll be a pretty color up against that L'Oreal single shadow oh yes 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 that's very pretty and then uh, I'll actually go in here no additional product and I'm just going to blend that just make sure everything stays you know good and seamless actually looks looks really pretty okay all right so which one of you is going to take the time to tell me that this was happening with my necklace <laughs> very rude okay um you're not trying to name names or anything but like you should have told me just saying so next up from here we're going to start doing a little highlighting that way we can get to mascara and of course you know finally finish up the face so uh first thing here i did go ahead and go in with a little bit of my nyx bear with me spray and for highlight seeing how i already have it out i'm still gonna stay in this libra palette here and i'm gonna use a little bit of the shade faith i'm just gonna apply that with my Jelly Pop Stipple. But to help with the blue highlight, which again, I don't mind. Like I've worn this as a highlight several times and I just think it's like a really fun little like pop. Like it's a little something different. Um, but if that's something like for today, for example, it doesn't, you know, necessarily match the look. You want to tone it down just a little bit. Um, I'm going to go in with a little bit of my ColourPop Horse and Carriage highlight right here. This is, you know, again, one of my favorite highlights. And going in with this will just ever so gently, like I'm, I'm barely touching my face. And it just ever so gently subdues the, uh, the blue undertone in that but you still get the yellow part of it like the the yellow kind of duochrome little little bit funky but not too funky you know what I mean kind of situation and it looks really really beautiful and they pair very nicely again this is a combo that I have done before and that I really like right now with the highlight on and applied looking all kinds of shiny and wonderful we are going to go ahead and finish up with some setting spray so first up we have the Urban Decay All Nighter then from there of course we're going to take a little bit of the Catrice Dewy Glow Setting Spray all right, now from here, we're gonna go ahead and test out this mascara. Again, this is the Paradise Ecstatic Mascara. I just want you to see, I don't know how well it shows up on camera, but this is just absolutely adorable. It looks like a Valentine's Day edition. It's so freaking cute. Of course, per usual, before I go in with uh, 
any such a devil, any mascara at all. Y'all know I have to curl up these little lashes, get every ounce of curl that we can. And then I'm just gonna start going in with mascara. I really like to build it up and, and get as much, you know, volume and length and, and all of that as I can. So typically I go in with probably like, you know, anywhere from two to three coats. Um, you know, just building it up depending on the mascara. So I'm gonna go ahead, uh, do that here real quick, and I will be back in a second. All right, beautiful people, while I was off of camera, not only did I finish up with the mascara, but I also did a real quick lip, and this is the full face, which we will get into the up close here in just a second. But before we do that, I want to uh, finish off talking about this mascara, because obviously I didn't say anything before I left, and it's really, you know, short and to the point. I actually really like this formula. I like the way that it applied. I like the wand that's on here. Um, I like the fact that when I'm applying it, it gives me a really nice fullness to my lashes without them being like thick and clumpy. It doesn't make them too um, stuck together. It really does a great job at individualizing the lashes. And then just for the lips, just to keep everybody informed, I did go in with a little bit of my Charlotte Tilbury. This is her Pillow Talk lip liner. And yes, you heard me right. I have this lip liner. Um, throughout all of the organizing, I figured I would pull it back out of my collection and, you know, dust it off, give it a little usey. So uh, I went in with this today. I lined and filled in the lips ever so slightly. And then over top of them, I went in with a little bit of this um, like sparkly lip balm lipstick situation. And uh, I don't think for me, like out of all the products I tried today, just to kind of wrap everything up, I think this is probably the one product that I'm just like, eh, like it's it's okay. It's not, you know, amazing. It's not awful. Um, it's just not my favorite because for me, if I'm looking for something that is glittery, if it, I want it to be shiny, if I want it to be literally anything that this is, I would just go in with a gloss and it gives me all of those things. Like, for example, I'm just going to grab a little bit of my Lunar Beauty Gloss. This is in the shade Celine from Manny's newest collection. And, like, look at the difference. And I barely touched my lip. Look at how full and amazing and luxurious and plump my lips look with just the teeny tiniest amount of a gloss, which, again, beautiful, shiny, fantastic, versus that. So, for me, I think out of everything, this is probably, like, a, a very clear-cut pass. I just don't think you need it. Uh, but from there, let's go ahead and I want to zoom in and talk about the other makeup so that way we can all kind of see what's going on. So, I'm going to go ahead and throw that up for you guys so we can take a look and go through it. Um, I think at this point which I've been filming now for quite a while. I've probably been wearing this makeup for like two, two and a half-ish hours. Um, I think it looks pretty good. I, I think that there are definitely some areas that while I've been wearing it and filming that do look a little bit less desirable, mainly like around my pores, up on my nose, like this whole region. I would probably go through and set it differently. But as far as overall complexion goes, I am very, very impressed. And I actually quite enjoy um, this combination that I have going on. Okay, so now that we've all seen the um, the up close together, I, I wanted to take a, a few minutes and kind of gather my thoughts because the main two products, you know, we talked about brows. I like the brows. I like the mascara. I like the blush. You know, I, I've been through all the other stuff, but the main two things that I'm still a little bit, you know, curious about are these two right here, you know, the, the two main complexion products. So I think what I'm going to do is I am going to, um, oh, that's not going to work. Okay. You know what? I'm going to have to do this one a little bit different and I know it's probably going to bug some of you and I'm sorry for that. Um, but the scheduling today just got all kinds of crazy. So what I'm actually going to do is maybe later on, like probably while I'm editing, I will, uh, I'll leave all of this makeup on so that way I can wear it for a while. And I will go ahead and insert a clip of me wearing it and uh, kind of give you my thoughts thus far. And even though it'll just be on my cell phone, I still think it'll be enough to kind of gauge where we're going with it. You know, give you a little bit more thought if I have any, as far as the products, how they're looking, um, if the glowy ever came out, all that good stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and insert that right here. Take it away, editing page. And all right, hello, hi, beautiful, wonderful, and fantastic people, editing page here. Um, it's been roughly, I want to say, like seven-ish hours that I've had this makeup on total at this point. So it turned out to be a pretty good wear test, and I just wanted to stop in, give you guys kind of my overall thoughts, run through, you know, things that I'm noticing, you know, good, bad, the ugly, and just kind of go from there. Again, just a first impression, but I wanted to stop on now that it's been a while. So the first thing I'm going to mention is actually the brows, and I have two reasons that I want to mention in this one for the pencil and one for the gel so first thing with the pencil like you guys know and if you're newer here
here. I'm more of combo skin leaning oily. And something that I always struggle with is um, whenever a pencil, like any kind of pencil or brow product, anytime it has like a creamy emolliency to it, it oftentimes will just like slough away on my brows because, you know, they're more oily. They kind of repel product after a while. And one thing that I really noticed um, is that th that didn't happen with this brow product. Like the color stayed completely intact. It hasn't worn off. It hasn't wiped off or, you know, done anything weird like that, which I really appreciate. So the, the long wearing aspect of this was on point for the pencil. And then the second thing I want to mention is, I don't know if you can see it up front, but yeah, you can right there. Look at that. Look at these feathered up adorable little brow hairs in, in the little front right here. Like normally my brow hairs, they just plaster down flat and this brow gel actually held really well. And it actually kept my brows like up and fluffy and in place all day and with a little bit of color, which I thought was super cute. Like they just look good and and like they have a little extra volume to them. And it just overall, it looks like my brows have more than the seven hairs that they normally do. And I'm just, I'm very grateful. So I wanted to point both of those things out. Now, moving on from brows to complexion, um, I'm going to pull you guys in fairly close here, just so you can see kind of what's going on. Um, now keep in mind, this is a harsher lighting than my beauty room, but I think overall, like if I just had to rate the entire complexion of the face, I would say that it lasted and it worked out to be about a seven and a half, eight. Like it's, it's actually a fairly decent makeup day. Um, the, the main issue that I'm having though, and I don't know, um, again, how well it's going to show up because I think you can see like a little radiance coming through. But my main issue with this, you know, foundation complexion overall is that I did expect it to have a little bit more, um, a little bit more glow, a little bit more radiance to it, a just a little bit more like life behind it, if you will. And I feel like with, you know, and that's just because of what they actually said, like the, the components that made up the foundation. And so I think my, my thought process on this, uh, thus far is twofold. Number one, I think that if you are someone that's leaning more dry and you wanted to test out this foundation, I would recommend doing it um, and, and if at all possible, either not setting it or setting it with like a, a finishing powder or something that's a really, really light mill because I prefer the Maybelline one because it does have a little bit more, um, a little bit more ass behind it. It has a little bit more oomph. But if I, I feel like that's part of the reason that it kind of dulled down and took away a little bit of that lilt. Now for me, that's not a deal breaker because I can change up, you know, that aspect of the foundation. I can add a different primer. I can add, you know, glowy aspects to it. I can put the uh, Charlotte Tilbury, what is that? That Hollywood glowy stuff underneath. You know, there there's a lot of ways that you can you can glow up your complexion. So I, I'm not mad at that. Um, and and past that, honestly, everything else wore nicely. It maintained the coverage that it had when we started. I feel like everything lasted well on top of it. Bronzer, blush, and highlighter are all still there. Um, and I, I just, I think that the overall, you know, that, that product lasted really well. Again, just kind of critiquing the powder aspect it worked well. And from there, you guys, I can't really think of anything else that uh, that needs to be said. I feel like overall it was a pretty, it was a pretty positive wear test. Yeah, pretty positive. And with that, beautiful people, that is the full face done and complete. Again, you can let me know all of your thoughts down below. If you are someone with any sort of intel and you have any uh, further information on this collection, if and when it's coming to the U.S., any of that, please leave it down below as well. If you haven't subscribed yet, please be sure to do it before you leave. I put up three new videos a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. They all go up around 7 a.m. my time here in the good old Northern MI. And of course, if you haven't checked me out yet, Instagram and on Twitter, please be sure to do that as well, especially over on Instagram because because that's where I do all the things. That's where I live my day-to-day -day life. That's where I tell embarrassing stories. That's where I post my selfies, talk about new product, new videos. I take polls. I do the whole thing. So check me out over there. Um, everything will be listed down below. And again, as much of this as I can will also be listed down below. And I think that that is everything, you guys. Thank you all so, so much for watching, for hanging out with me. I hope that you enjoyed it, that it was fun to watch. And um, you guys, yeah, that, that's everything. Thank you all so much for being here. And uh, please don't forget to have an amazing day, night, weekend, whatever it is when you're watching this. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. I often wonder what it would be like to be a person that just doesn't have a cat because their life, like think about how easy it is to just not have a cat and literally not be covered in cat hair every second of every day. Like, what are you doing? Well, I'm not plucking cat hairs out of my foundation. What are you doing? I'm not pulling a cat hair out of my eye or out of my nose or out of some other orifices. Oh man, it's, it's exhausting being a cat owner. And not only that, I'm pretty convinced that they plot to murder you in your sleep. Like I'm not, I'm not trying to get on your bad side, kitty cat, but I'm just saying, I'm convinced, okay, that she tries to murder me in my sleep, like actually suffocates me. I can't prove it, but it's a thing.